Hi everyone, thank you for watching uh, the video that I made on high protein bodybuilding diet. My thoughts has been getting some good uh, feedback, lots of uh, lots of uh, activity on that video, and this is a follow up video to kind of delve into the issue a little more. Um, I wrote an article on bodybuilding.com. If you just put my name into the search engine, Ivan Blaskas, and protein requ requirements, it's called a need for reevaluation. Um, that article is actually even a little bit out. It's 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 accurate, but it's a little outdated because I don't even think we need as much protein as I recommend in the article. Although the article is fairly accurate and it's fairly reliable. Basically, the common thread is you know one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you weigh 160 pounds, if you weigh 160 pounds, that would be 160 grams of protein per day, right? That is just absolute paranoia. That's that's the ultra conservative approach. That gives people peace of mind who are paranoid about losing muscle and all this nonsense. Um, I've cited research, and uh, when I was featured in Vegan Health and Fitness for the month of July, August, you can go online and get that issue if, if to read it in its full entirety. The question was, where do I get my protein? And I discussed that there are studies that have shown that even in calor even in the face of caloric deficit, that if you lift weights. The act of resistance training preserves muscle mass. It's a significant st stimulus to, to muscle retention. So, you know, let's get out of that old school, like, you know, 1990s, 1980s, even the 2000s mindset of, you know, protein is going to help you keep. It's, there's so many other elements besides this, and it it's all stems to the extreme discussion group, the, the, the extreme bodybuilders uh, who. And this could be the steroid users as well as the naturals who are still, you know, or just big meat eaters, right? I get it. Um, and the point is, is that that we don't need as much protein as we think. Okay, um, your body gets anabolic mainly when when we recover, right? They say like, you know, you don't build muscle in the gym; you build it when you're when you're recovering. Well, what's the best recovery tool, nutritionally speaking? Let's think about that for a second. Antioxidants, foods that are rich in antioxidants, foods that are that can quench the free radical production from exercise, high intensity resistance training, high intensity cardio, right, or just exercise, right. So, what are some of the richest foods in antioxidants? Dark leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables, allium vegetables, lots of food sources that come from the vegetable family as well as berries, okay, fruits, things of that nature nuts and seeds, beans, okay? Those foods speed up recovery. So what do you think that does to muscle? It helps you get bigger, helps your muscle grow. If you can recover faster and better and optimally, I just mentioned that the, the most important time of muscle growth happens is when we're repairing muscle from, from being broken down in the gym when it rebuilds. Well, how about optimizing that process of rebuilding? How much research is there out there on antioxidant status and muscle uh, development hypertrophy? I mentioned this and I alluded to this in the feature uh, for vegan health and fitness that there's not much research on that topic. Maybe there's a few studies that are starting to scratch the surface of that. But that's what I'm talking about. This is in the trenches. I'm using my conceptual foundational knowledge base to, to like develop and devise nutritional strategies and, and, and tactics. And I'm living proof of it. because. Um, I have a good amount of muscle, I weigh 160 pounds, 4% body fat, and I carry 160 pounds, let's look at this scientifically, and I'm only about 5'7". 160 pounds for my height is actually would put me at just a tad overweight according to the body mass index. And I know a lot of you don't like the body mass index, but the truth of the matter is, is that it's a ballpark estimate that is fairly accurate, okay? It's incorrect for people who are athletes and people who are... Um, uh, mainly athletes, okay, people who carry a greater muscle mass than the average person, right? Well, based on that scale, that puts me in that class, someone who carries above average muscle mass for, for, uh, compared to the normal person. So, again, you know, of course people would say you'd look better if you're 180 pounds at 5'7". Again, it's, a discrete, it's an extreme discussion group. And then what are the caveats to getting to that 180 pound barrier? One, you're going to affect your metabolism. You're gonna you're gonna switch it to being more anabolic, and anabolic doesn't just mean muscle building. I've said this before. The body doesn't work in these exclusivity uh, phases. Okay, you're gonna be building fat too. 
So you're not going to be 180 pounds at 4% if you started at 160. It's going to be a, a bulk cut phase, and that can wreak havoc on your body's natural set point, particularly your, your, your body weight set point and so forth. And if you've done it before, it's okay. It's never too late to change. We get that. And you can obviously start, it's like a smoker, uh, someone who smoked for like 20 years. The, the longer they go without smoking, once they quit, their risk of those health problems declines accordingly. It's the same thing with like if you cut in bulk, it's, it's not like you did irreparable, ir, ir, irreparable damage. You can always start to slowly turn the tide and switch that back, okay? So it's all about being positive because that's the key here, okay? I'm not someone who's just ranting and uh, I'm being honest. Uh, I'm citing evidence-based uh, advice, okay? So when you come to my channel and you come to my videos, you know you're going to be getting cutting edge research and not just bro science, all right? So, um, so again, we don't need as much protein as we think. And I mentioned in the video that protein is not the only thermogenic nutrient. Again, the research sometimes is not ahead of, sometimes the research is catching up to what, uh, you know, health and fitness professionals and experts in the field are currently practicing. It catches up sometimes, okay? So uh, the research is showing that, you know, there's the resistant starch content in carbohydrate sources, healthy carbohydrate sources, is thermogenic, as well as the, uh, you know, the, the metabolic processing of nuts and seeds is thermogenic, okay? So don't just think protein is the only way to uh, lose weight or get shredded or lose body fat, okay? This is health-based bodybuilding 101. This is what I educate people on, doing it the healthy way. And I'm hardcore healthy, so um, you know that's what I bring. And and if you're interested in in in, in preserving your health and having long-term wellness, um, this is the right place. Because I'm gonna, I I I really have a passion for bodybuilding, but also have a passion for health. And it took me a while to be able to balance that because it's not easy. And as you know. Bodybuilding is notoriously known for being unhealthy. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, tune in next time.